It's just straight liquor. <laughs> We're talking about love is blind again. It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? Again, if you're also not familiar with my channel, then you don't know that I don't usually talk about reality shows except for something where Satan hosts, I mean the Lachey's. <laughs> And today we are finally closing this chapter of Love is Blind season four. I've made two videos about this season already. If you haven't seen those, I will link those down below. But today we are talking about the weddings, the reunion, and briefly towards the end, we're gonna talk a little bit about an episode of The Vile Files that came out today. I'm filming this on Tuesday uh, that had Marshall on it briefly. I listened to it while I was doing my makeup today. And um, that's a little bit about the aftermath of the season as well as the reunion. Also, side note, um, apparently my episode last time, which was about episode six through 11, was trending on YouTube. We should do it again. <laughs> Just a one woman team here, baby. No editing, no quality, all content. <laughs> Just me here, a pretty face, a laid lace, and a lot of things to talk about, baby. Love that. <laughs> I haven't checked my lace. I shouldn't be so cocky. Anyway, uh, but before we get into that, you guys know the drill. We got to send it over to Admiral Kenny so she can pay some bills. She also bought a new Squishmallow. It's been a while. It's been months. It's a walrus <laughs> with a mohawk. Not a mohawk. What is this? A top knot? I don't know. It's cute. The name, ironically, incidentally, uh, the name that the Squishmallow company gave him was Kwame. I will be naming him William the Walrus. Willie the Walrus. So yes, watch this ad read so I can put food on the table for Willie the Walrus. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Admiral Kenny and today's video is sponsored by Athletic Greens. AG1 is greens powder that offers 75 vitamins and minerals as well as comprehensive nutrition in just one scoop. It's a wonderful daily habit that allows you to supplement your diet so that you're getting your vitamins, your minerals, your probiotics, your prebiotics, you're supporting your immune system, you're supporting your gut health, especially on those days when your diet is not doing everything that it should be doing. Sure, we should be eating salad and you still should, but sometimes you don't wanna eat salad. It boosts energy so much so that some people may find that they don't need caffeine in the morning or don't need caffeine throughout the day. Personally, I'm insane. So I like to mix uh, athletic greens with my pre-workout and then go to the gym and then conquer like a juggernaut. I just rain down power and strength upon you minions. AG1 sources the best whole food sourced ingredients and it's gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, keto, low calorie, and less than one gram of sugar per serving. If you're wondering about the taste, to me, it kind of tastes like fruity matcha. So if you're a matcha person, I think you'll like it. It, it kind of tastes like a berry blue over <laughs> a cup of matcha. That's how I That's how I feel about it. But yeah, it gives me a boost in the morning, gives me that nice like sustained energy so I don't find that I tend to crash after I've had it. Um, TMI, but as a person who's regularly irregular, uh, I have found that things have been moving along. <laughs> A bit better when I use it, just say it. So if you would like to try out Athletic Greens, that'll be linked down below. You can click on my link below and get a one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs. Big thanks again to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. This is very strong. This video is gonna get very interesting. So again, if you haven't seen my first two videos about the season, I will link those down below. That is episodes one through 11, as well as just for anybody that's not particularly familiar with Love is Blind, the premise and everything, I would start with those. You have missed several classes of this course. You are in the wrong class. You really need to start uh, with your prerequisites. So quick recap. Last time we were here, we were leading up to the weddings, yeah? And I also gave my predictions, which let's do a refresher on that and see if I was right. So I said that Chelsea would say yes and Kwame would say no. I slurred that a little bit. <laughs> Kwame would say no. Tiffany and Brett would both say yes. Zach and Bliss would both say yes. And if anyone were to say no, it would be Bliss. And Paul would say yes and Michael would say no. So let's see what my accuracy rate was. So when we left off, we were at Kwame and Chelsea's wedding, yeah? And they were basically giving us every indication 
that Kwame does not want to marry Chelsea. They spent most of the screen time of him just giving a bunch of reasons why he doesn't want to marry Chelsea. But as we saw in the last episode at the end, she's already said yes. So I'm sitting there like, ain't no way in hell this man is going to say yes. But despite that, I would be surprised. I have, I've been surprised before. So I'm sitting there with bating breath, waiting for him to like give his answer. And his answer. I do. <laughs> be damned i would i was shocked if you watched last week i was very adamant about it because it was filmed before the wedding episode was released so i was like man i doubt it i would be very shocked he would shock me and he has i don't really know how to feel about that um because again whether it be because that's how he really was on his wedding day or just because of editing that wanted to you know make a narrative which we have stuff to discuss in regards to that later anyway. But for whatever reason, they made him look incredibly uncomfortable on his wedding day, or he just was incredibly uncomfortable on his wedding day. But regardless, they's married and they've been married for like a year now. So we'll say the most happy I've ever seen them, spoiler, is at the reunion. They looked very happy there. So I don't know, I don't know, whatever. But good for them. I mean, at the end of the day, it ain't my marriage. You know, I hope it's great. So next up is Micah and Paul's wedding. And again, my prediction was that Micah would say no and Paul would say yes. I think more so than anything, more so than like one person saying yes or the other person saying no or whatever. My prediction is that someone is gonna say no and they will not be getting married. So leading up to the altar, Micah is talking with her friend. And I happen to notice as a side note, one of them looks shockingly like Irina. <laughs> I think uh, maybe in the pod, she kind of like skipped some stages of vetting as friendship. Cause she's like, she kind of looks like my friend. <laughs> but she's in there like, I like love him. And like, I feel so sure about him, but I don't know a hundred percent from him if he's sure about me. I don't know like what he will say. Like, I don't know. And in fairness, I haven't really talked a whole lot about it because there was other pressing issues, but it's not that that's necessarily coming out of nowhere. There, There is this like indication that both of them are incredibly reserved. And so it's kind of hard to read both of them, particularly Paul, again, the robot man. I don't really understand anything about how he emotes or does things. Right before the wedding, he's like talking to his friends and they're like mad casual about it. They're like, so should I get married? And they're like, yeah, just like eating peanuts <laughs> before the big day. She gets ready, she gets in her wedding dress. I like it. I actually really like it. People didn't like it, I liked it. I think, I like very like simple dresses like that. I don't like the hair with it though. I think we could have did something else in that regard, but, but there they go, ready to do the thing. Angela Best, sorry. <laughs> It was an intrusive thought and I went with it, I'm sorry. And they go up on the altar and they ask Micah first, do you marry this man or whatever? And she says like, I think for both of us, it would be better if I allow you to answer that first. <laughs> so she just like passes the ball <laughs> to Paul. Uh, I didn't know you could do that, what a play. And so it's his time to say how he feels about things. And ultimately his answer is no. Again, I expected her to say no, but a no is a no, whatever. Um, he's like, I love you, but I don't think that we are at the right place to do this. I don't think it's our time. She's like, honestly, that's how I thought you felt about me. And I always had this looming worry that you weren't all in. And now you just like confirmed it. Um, and I never felt safe with you. And he starts to say something along the lines of like, I think that whatever decision I make is like, I'm doing it for the both of us. I think it's best for both of us. But before he can say that, she just walks off. And you know, I don't like Micah, but boy, do I love a walk off. I swear, <laughs> it's so, oh, uh, I just love it. It's so dramatic. I was about to be very honest. I've always craved a walk off personally. I've never gotten one. I've never gotten a storm out moment. <laughs> I've gotten a, hang up in the middle of an apology moment. That was fun, but it wasn't, it wasn't, what is that scene in Girlfriends? I know how devastating this must be for you, but I love Todd, this can never be. Um, but anyway, she walks off crying and her friends, I mean, y'all know each other better, but 
I, I would feel some type of way if my friends start laughing in the middle of me sobbing down the aisle at my wedding day just because they're like, I'm just happy they're not together. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But like, that's your friend and she's obviously devastated. <laughs> like, but she goes off to the bridal quarter. She's crying. He comes in there trying to like, you know, console her. And she's like, no, like, it's too hurtful to, like, see you. Like, I can't. But eventually he leaves when all the, like, girl squad comes in. In the after interview, he says something along the lines of, like, they love each other. There's no doubt about that. But it does feel like sometimes that love isn't fully reciprocated. And perhaps because they're both holding back, they're both very reserved, He wonders like if it was just them feeding off of each other and no one being fully vulnerable and that just had this like negative loop. He then says something that had not come up at any point prior to this where he said it was hard to envision Micah as a mother. He said something along the lines of like, I never felt like she had this like innate nurturing quality. I don't know. I don't know what is it about that statement that I find so icky. So I'm not going to say any more on that because I wish I could better expound upon what about that statement made me uncomfortable, but I can't. So I'm just going to say, ew. And then they show Micah in her after interview. She's crying. She's like, I would have said yes, which again is wild because I thought she was waxing and waning, but apparently she wasn't or so she says she wasn't, but he was. I don't know. So I was wrong on that one. Well, I was, I was right in the fact that they're not getting married, but I was wrong with who said no. Tiffany and Brett, girl, I ain't even gonna draw this out because they like to. They said yes, exactly. Thank God. But let's just talk more about like the actual wedding because it was actually the, oh my God. I don't think I've ever cried at a Love is Blind wedding. I cried at Brett and Tiffany's wedding. I They're getting in preparation for the wedding. And when they were doing like the trailer, for this part of the series, they showed a part about Brett complaining, saying something along the lines of like, this should not have happened. This should not have happened. And the moment they showed that, I knew they were gonna try to make that into like something dramatic, but it's, I knew, I was like, it's gonna be his suit is missing. Something's wrong with the pants. Something's wrong with the shoes. Something outfit related is wrong. It's not their marriage. So lo and behold, I was correct. It was that his um, pants didn't fit. So he was like freaking out about it. And people were calling him like Groomzilla online. It should be a day of no surprises. It should be a day of planning. I know what to expect. I know how it fits. This should not happen. This is avoidable. I thought he was completely reasonable to freak out about that. It's his wedding day. He's like, I will not have my wife, my future wife, see me in ill-fitting pants. So he said an hour before the wedding, I'm gonna walk over to a random seamstress and get her to fix my pants because today is my wedding day, damn it. You're not gonna have me, a designer, sagging on my wedding day? Absolutely not. So he does that, they get ready. She walks down the aisle, he starts crying. Ah! Again, if I were to ever marry, I want to see your tears. I want you to not be able to hold back the overwhelming love and affection that you feel for me. And if it does not result in your tear ducts overflowing, overwhelming you, pushing you to sensations that are uncontrollable in your sheer relief and gratefulness to have me as your wife, I will go back down the aisle and we will do it over and over and over again until it does. It's what I deserve. Anyway, so (laughs) he starts crying. I start crying. Everybody starts crying. It's just that, that look of sheer joy and like preparedness. Like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be your husband and I am ready to be your wife. And if it ain't this, I don't want it. That's so beautiful. Uh, Marshall was actually at the wedding. That was cute, uh, cheering them on. That was really nice. I will say that one of the like lesser mentioned really cool things have been like the relationships, like the friendships built between what we see mostly on camera is like the men. So like Marshall and Brett, Zach and Paul, but Marshall and Brett more so you see more of this like brotherhood that I think is really, really endearing and beautiful and should be seen more. I think it's really nice. But yeah, that's the wedding. It's beautiful and I'm so happy for them. They're my favorite. I'm rooting for (sighs) y'all. Oh, they give me hope that love is still out there. It's still alive somewhere waiting for me. What song am I singing?
just around the river bend. Pocahontas, there you go. I look once more just around the river bend, beyond the shore, where the doves fly free. Don't know what for, but I dream the day might be just around the river bend. This hits. Last but not least, we have Zach and Bliss. Like I said, I guess that they would say yes leading up to it. And I don't know, there was something about the wedding preparation that made me have a new like appreciation for Zach and Bliss. And I guess what kind of like stopped me from enjoying them as a couple is kind of like situationally <laughs> how they got together. Um, I found it very off-putting that, you know, he picked Irina and then when that went wrong, he was like, no, let me go back to Bliss. But I think in the process of them like talking about their relationship and kind of showing more about them. I started to appreciate them as a couple more because it was just very hard to get past that. I think the thing that helped is because at one point, it, one of his friends kind of asked him essentially like, well, how do you know that Bliss is the one after you chose like someone else? <clears throat> like what makes you so sure about Bliss? And he says something along the lines of like, the reason I didn't pick her was because the day before we broke up, we had an argument. We saw, we see pieces of this conversation. It didn't come off as an argument uh, to me, but again, I wasn't there, where they were talking about his fears around being accepted into a family because he's dated people who did not accept him because of how he grew up and his, his upbringing and his mother, her background as a stripper and, and all that. And so kind of, I guess, hearing about her upbringing, it scared him a little bit. And she seemed to just kind of say, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And it wasn't really like taking care of that, like asking where that fear is coming from. I wonder to some degree if that's why he chose Irina as far as like, yes, because he's afraid to be accepted into this family, but also because in a way he saw Irina as the underdog or, you know, something like that. And I think maybe that kind of pushed him in her direction a bit. But, but now that they've taken the leap, so to speak, and kind of put aside his fears and, and trauma associated with that i think it's pretty evident that they were supposed to know each other and so for that i think it's cute you know it's very cute circumstances are certainly unconventional but hey you're also on love is blind so <laughs> but yeah they do their speeches they do their vows and they both say i do yes they do get married so i was kind of right about most of them. The only one that really shocked me was the Kwame Chelsea one. That was downright wrong with that one. But yeah, they get married. Um, They have their first dance to the song, I Hope You Dance, which I didn't think I knew that song, but apparently I do. Because for the first time, possibly in Love is Blind history, they actually paid for the licensing to play that an actual song instead of that like Russian roulette where every chamber has a bullet in it of royalty free, terrible music. They dance to it. That kind of got me a little misty not as much as uh tiffany and uh brett but i gotta love help you dance you know that's yeah that's the weddings so three couples said yes which is more than usual no i know last year was two what was before that there was only two in the season before that right and i hope they're all happy you know but yes that's the wedding and being that the season was so tumultuous possibly more love triangles than ever before ha there was so much hype <laughs> leading up to the reunion. There was a lot of buzz around the reunion because it was so messy and also it would be live or it was supposed to be live. This is kind of a side note. Leading up to the reunion, I got a tweet from Netflix. I don't know what this is. This is probably some new Elon shit, but Netflix added me to remind me about the reunion. I think this is kind of like a signing people on an email list type thing, but for Twitter, know how I feel about that. Trying to get free promo out of me again, bitch. I should go on strike if I didn't make a few bucks off of this video as well. But uh, for those of you that were rearing up to go at 8 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time Sunday, then you you were aware of the chaos that went around when, when the fucking stream did not work. And then Netflix was like, oh, we just need 15 minutes. And then an hour passed and they're like, oh, we're still, it'll be worth the wait. And, and let me tell you something, Twitter is always, it's funniest at 
moments of confusion and moments of chaos and uncertainty. And so I would like to share with you some of my favorite tweets. Eventually, by the time they started streaming, which they never fully got it fixed. It was like some people could watch it, some people couldn't. I got it to the place that I actually could watch it, but I had a headache and I was like, it'll be there in the morning. And if it's not there, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> but I ended up watching uh, the reunion today. So we can talk about that as well. I will preface by saying that the reunion was <sighs> messy. It was a mess, <laughs> let's just say that. It was a mess, but not messy in any of the ways that I originally expected it to be. Again, giving subject matter and, and people on cast and the events that have taken place. It was actually more of a logistic failure in so many ways. And it proved all the reasons why you should never do a reunion that is very emotionally charged uh, live because more so than it was, at least in my opinion, watching it, more so than it was a conversation between the castmates, to me, it felt like a very long sneak diss uh, to the producers, the editors for decisions that they made in the final product, as well as the Lachey's, particularly Vanessa, coming off incredibly annoying, like more so than any other reunion we've seen. And again, annoying in ways that I, that I'm not, f that I wasn't fully mentally prepared for. A lot of them like asking arguably incredibly inappropriate questions, which is hard to say considering in the context, their job is to coax drama out of the cast members and stuff, but it just came off very obnoxious. And then a bunch of questions about when people are popping out a baby. Vanessa was very eager to learn that. She asked it several times. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this is the first Love is Blind reunion to have an audience, like a live audience in studio. But at least I will say in this one, uh, that adds a very particular quality. <laughs> Flavor of love adjacent quality <laughs> to the chaos that is a part of the reaction to the things being said. Definitely turned this reunion into much more of a spectacle. Um, and, it, and maybe that is what uh, made the Lachey's feel like they were out for blood a bit more to get that reaction to, you know. Uh, for those wondering, Jackie and Josh did not come to the reunion, boo cop out. They decided to instead uh, chime in via a pre-recorded Zoom call with Vanessa the day prior, which, ugh, that, that's a bitch move. You can't do all that and then not come to the reunion. You can't do all that and not at least do a live call in. Like it was, mm, you can't take any criticism. Okay. But yeah, that's what they did. So they start, you know, asking the questions, seeing if everyone's good. Vanessa gets weird about like whether or not Tiffany and Brett have consummated the wedding or like if they did it in the wedding or something. I don't know. It was very weird. The first like thing of poignant drama that they bring up are all of the love triangles that happened this year or this season, I should say. Um, first off, they talked about Chelsea Kwame and Micah uh, and they then showed a never before seen clip of Micah and Chelsea kind of burying the hatchet. If you recall, they were gonna have a conversation to talk things over, I believe when they were in Mexico, but it started raining, so they didn't get around to that. So this was them like officially hashing everything out. And that overall seemed to go fine. The Lachey's turned to Chelsea and they were like, okay, when you saw the scene of Kwame and Micah, like, how did you feel? And she says what you would think she would say. It was difficult to see, you know, but me and Micah settled things. Me and Kwame talked about it for a very long time. We only saw a very small part of that conversation when we got back. And so, I mean, it was, it was hard to see, but it's nothing that I didn't know happened. And right then Kwame comes in to apologize to Chelsea and her family for how he acted. He essentially says that the moment got the best of him. Um, he then goes on to clarify that after he left the pods, therefore engaged with Chelsea, he no longer had any feelings for Micah. Um, that's what he says. He says that one of the things that we don't see as the audience is that leading up to them breaking up, um, Micah and Kwame breaking up, it had gotten to the point that they were starting to be more distant anyway. Um, they had had many long dates that they had ended early. They were not having as much fun in their dates anymore. So it was pretty inevitable that they were about to break up. At that point, he was very clear that the person that he wanted was Chelsea. Personally, Personally, I feel like if that were the case, the conversation would have been over after saying that wasn't cool. But who am I? 
not a person on set, not Kwame, not Chelsea, not Micah. So what do I know? But uh, I think it was Nick asked him like, well, why did you react so strongly when she broke up with you in the pods? Because if it was already drifting apart, like why did that hurt you so bad? And he was like, well, because it was a rela- it was a relationship at one point. Like there was something meaningful there at one point and that hurts regardless of if you knew it was coming or not. I wish I would have handled that better so that there would have been more closure so that it wouldn't have had any lingering animosity feelings. I That's what I read it as into Mexico. But uh, he answers this in the very like, manicured Kwame way. Then Vanessa starts to get very annoying because she starts to like poke at one line that Chelsea said in the scene where Micah and Chelsea are squashing things. Chelsea ends up saying like, from what you told me in the pods, you were breaking up with him. Mm -hmm. And from what he told me, he was breaking up with you. So you guys were like breaking up with each other. And apparently Vanessa's ears was like very, Ooh, Micah, like what, what do you feel about that? Your eyebrows shot up when, when she said that, like, what do you, what do you feel? Micah kind of answers the way that I probably would, which was like, essentially doesn't matter. <laughs> like we chose who we chose. We chose the right decision. It doesn't really matter the, at what point, at what, I think the word she uses is cadence, which I think is a great word choice for that. It doesn't matter at what cadence we did it. And then when Micah doesn't give her the right answer, the, that juiciness that she's looking for, she goes to Chelsea and asks her essentially the same question. She's like, girl, I was focused on Kwame. I don't know when they did whatever they did. And this is when I start to notice, I don't know if this is because they haven't edited out certain questions, but this is when like the, the inherent prying that you have to do to host a show like this makes the laches come off incredibly antagonistic makes them look like instigators it's like come on give us something <laughs> which inherently is true again as their as their position is like leading this reunion but i think the cast members do a very good job of like you not getting me which kind of leads me to the point that i started to notice is that slowly but surely to me this whole reunion just turned into cast members sneak dissing the edit and sneak dissing production for creating you know, whatever illicit narrative that they wanted to create. Chelsea ends up saying something along the lines of like, every conversation between Kwame and Micah after Mexico was quote, pushing a narrative that wasn't ours. And she does this little like, <laughs> where a, like she knew she kind of, she might've, <laughs> she might've, oop, I wasn't supposed to say that, but Kwame again clarifies that after the proposal, there was no confusion. There was never a chance he wanted to be with Micah after the pods and everything happened because it was supposed to go the way that it went. Don't think that's true. I think maybe by the time they got to the wedding, yeah. But when you were still in Mexico crying and shit about how you felt about her and she just said, shout outs to a failed proposal, you still wanted that girl, but he said he didn't. Okay, whatever. Uh, they then addressed some internet drama, which I have yet to address. There's a lot of stuff going on and I don't feel like looking into all of it because I will never get this video out. We're just gonna focus on the things that were mentioned here. Uh, they bring up the rumor that Kwame hired someone to play his sister for the wedding. And I saw that as well. I actually retweeted it for a second because I was like, what the f***? But what happened was an article came out that said people are saying that Kwame hired someone to be his sister for the wedding. And then when I read the article, it was like people on the internet. I'm like, that's not. So I deleted the retweet because that's stupid. Uh, but no, that's his sister. Chelsea ended up meeting the mom eventually for Thanksgiving. And she said that she welcomed her with open arms. So that's nice. Unfortunate that she couldn't be at the wedding um, considering they are now married. And if everything goes well, he'll never have another one. So she missed that. That's that's really sucky. Okay, they move on to Zach and Bliss. Vanessa does another bout of pressuring about kids. She was pressuring Tiffany and Brett earlier, but I just skipped that one of many times she does it. It's only an hour and a half and she does it over and over and over. Bliss and Zach. So they're all cute. They're matching up. Again, they grew on me a little bit as a couple in that last episode, weirdly enough. They're both nerdy and in love. I will say, I think he looks better with a beard. A beard is better than no beard, in my opinion. All men, according to me, should have facial hair. Otherwise, they look like thumbs. Anyway, she looks gorgeous. Her makeup, 
so nice. And this kind of leads into them showing clips of Micah and Irina who were on their mean girl spree. That's when Irina comes out and they kind of ask her to sort of defend herself. I will say one of the gripes that I kind of have in this regard is that, or just a main gripe that I kind of had throughout the reunion is that somehow, despite Micah being present for a lot of the really shitty things, she somehow skirts criticism. And for all the like mean girl stuff, Irina for some reason is the only person that gets called out for that. I'd say that she's probably the aggressor or she's maybe, maybe the more action oriented sabotage person. And I kind of brought this up in my first episode talking about they're both like really mean, but Micah's just better at hiding it. And the fact that she kind of skirts most responsibility is very annoying to me, but they basically for both of them being mean girls, they just like chastise Irina about it. They ask like, how does she feel about that? How does Zach feel about seeing her act like that? Blah, 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 you know, Irina. <laughs> This isn't funny. Uh, Irina basically starts to answer <laughs> and she's like, wait, I need a minute. <sighs> Sorry, I just need a minute. <laughs> and I lost it. Uh, <laughs> the laugh caught me off guard and that really got me. Um, <laughs> that audience is very unserious, but she goes into talking about how watching it back was very difficult and how when she got into the show, she re she went in with a very like selfish perspective. She wasn't there to make friends. That's kind of the thought process she had when she went in. And she realized by proxy of doing that, she ended up hurting a lot of people. She says something vaguely about like having like mental issues. Um, and that was no excuse, but it like, I was having panic attacks and blah, blah, blah. I, I'm kind of concising a lot of back and forth into one thing. So she says that she reached out to all the girls that was in the girls' quarters. They She like apologized to all of them privately. They then asked Zach if he ever thought that Irina took their relationship seriously. And he says, no, like we only saw maybe 10% of kind of the really mean, sabotage-y, shitty things that she did. And he kind of just explicitly says like I feel like you got on the show to be famous if we're real you went on this show to get famous <laughs> the audience gasped and it was like oh my god was like, <laughs> very Maury he was like but I forgive you I don't I don't hold it against you. I feel like, you know, we all deserve the space to grow and we've all done dumb things, cringy things that would be shown on the show. Sure, I could blast you and stuff with receipts, but the only receipts that I need to share are the ones that I shared on my Instagram, which is one of the smoothest ad lead-in plugs that I've ever seen. Well, what receipts? It's more wholesome than you think. Where he just basically tells the story of his struggles with his mother in particular and his journey to forgiveness and stuff like that. It's very intimate. I could also see it being a bit triggering. So I am not gonna go into detail, um, but it's basically like a like a alley you You thought I was here to air out Irina's dirty laundry and instead I'm giving you a story about grace and forgiveness. But I guess the Lachey's don't care about that because they <laughs> <laughs> to Irina and they're like, okay, well, if you knew from seeing him, you didn't want to be with him. Why did you go? Like, why did you keep going? Like, why did you go to Mexico? And I'm sitting here like, probably cause you told her to go. It's called a production company wants you to stick it out. And she's like, basically I wanted to go home the day after I met him. I had a panic attack and production was like, well, we should at least talk to Zach in Mexico. And she's like, right, he does deserve that. So y'all got her to go to Mexico. This, okay, this brings up, again, I don't like Irina, but this show and particularly this reunion really likes to try to gaslight you. And that is, again, if you're gonna try to do that, I would not recommend a live reunion. <laughs> It breaks the fourth wall. These aren't people who are doing entirely 100% natural things. These are people on set with production assistants who are there to kind of like nudge them in a particular direction. And to then ask her, well, why'd you go to Mexico? Cause y'all told me to go to Mexico. Hello? 
want to know what they contracts are like because that would that would help me a lot in conceptualizing certain I'm very interested anyway but as far as her like being rude and shitty to him she was like I felt very trapped and I thought I was being sincere but at the end of the day I was just being an asshole to you and you didn't deserve that yeah I guess Irina owns up to it if I whatever I don't care after this reunion I will never see her face again it's up to you to decide how you feel about her and whether or not you think her apology is sincere the reunion to me seems like a bunch of people who are literally just trying to get past this bullshit and are just doing their contractual obligations but they're all like incredibly tired of answering the same questions and because it's live you can't edit out those parts well you probably can now but they I guess they said fuck if you saw it, you saw it. They go to Bliss and they were like, well, how do you feel about it? She was like, I'm just so tired of talking about this. <laughs> it's such a small blip in our relationship, in our love story. And I'm honestly uninterested in addressing this again. Yeah, you did f***ed up shit. We've discussed it. I hope you grow. I hope you take accountability. Let's move on. But because he can't get anything shaken with that, they're going to go to Irina and Micah, particularly how Irina was flirting with Paul. And they turn to Paul and they're like, so what do you have to say about that? And <sighs> Paul's weird. He is. He is weird. Well, essentially me and Micah discuss what we think infidelity is and what it isn't. And our determination was essentially physical intimacy. So doing anything physical with people. Quote, he knew what he was and wasn't willing to do and what lines he wasn't willing to cross. And he flirted with Irina because he knew that it wasn't doing anything to jeopardize their relationship. Okay, they're not together anymore. I guess it doesn't matter now, but that sounds like cheating logistics, don't it? <laughs> but anyway, again, they're not together. So whatever, I don't care. That just hurt my brain. Then they bring up more internet drama, which is the, the video. Another person sent me this as well. The video of Paul allegedly tapping the ass of one of <laughs> Micah's bridesmaids or something on the way out after leaving her crying in her bridal suite. And he's like, no, I bumped into her shoulder and gestured at her when I got out of the room. Y'all are weird. I didn't think that was th that. That's very stupid. I, I, I like he doesn't strike me as a downright stupid man. I don't think he no, I don't think he was there because I saw people. They were like, yeah, he's sleeping with one of her bridesmaids. I'm like, where are y'all getting this in? Where are y'all getting this from? <laughs> but anyway, they asked Micah if she would be married to Paul if he had said yes. And then she starts crying and she's like, I knew that I would say yes, but I didn't want to say yes first and then him answer in agreement with me just because he didn't want to embarrass me or, or anything like that. I wanted him to make the decision because he wanted to make the decision. And I'm, you know, I'm happy I did it because I think it showed me, you know, where he was at. And I don't know if I ever would have known that if I would have answered first. And she's not necessarily wrong. And they turn to him and they're like, so if she hadn't have done that, do you think you would have said yes? And he was like, well, I would, I wouldn't, my knee jerk is to say no, like I would have chosen the same answer. But honestly, I don't, I don't know. Cause like to have a person like affirm you in that way, maybe, I, I don't know. They then bring up his comment about not being able to see her as a mom, which apparently is one thing in particular that really upset Micah because parenthood, motherhood had been, Apparently something they had talked about a lot, but that we didn't end up seeing on camera. A day or two before the wedding, he turns to her and he's like, what if down the line I didn't want to have kids? That really upset her because she was like, you know how much being a mother is something that I really, really want to do. And so to hear him say he, he couldn't see me, you know, nurturing enough to be a mother or or something like that, especially when it's not something that we ever talked about and it was never a concern that he brought up to me, was really shocking to hear that after he says no, apparently because that is the one of the major reasons why you didn't say yes. Paul's like, I feel like I phrased that poorly because it sounds like I'm making it her fault where that's not really fair to her. It was more so I couldn't see us as parents. L like she just said, I did bring up like, what if, what if I didn't want to have kids down the line? He, 
he almost gets it. Again, for those of you that know, I'm not a fan of Micah, so I'm not here necessarily to fall on the sword to defend her or anything. But I didn't like how he worded this. And, and again, maybe I can work through more why this was upsetting to me. Because I thought he was going to take this as an opportunity to own that he probably was projecting onto her about that because he doesn't want to have kids. So he's like, I can't even see you as a mother. And it's like, no, you can't see yourself as a father. I think the problem with me was that I didn't facilitate an environment for her to be nurturing. So I didn't see her as nurturing. So I couldn't see her as a mother. And it's like, what? I didn't want to like ask her to be more nurturing because I feel like that's just something that she should be innately. Like I didn't want to force it just so that she can get like resentful at me and stuff like that. I'm like, um, sir. Again, that sounds like something that you should have took ownership of. That That's a you thing. It's because most likely you're not really sure about parenthood and now you're making it like a her fault thing. Anyway. All right. So the moment you all are waiting for Jackie and Marshall and Josh, uh, they bring that up and they start this segment off with showing a clip of Jackie and Josh in the pods. Again, we didn't see a whole lot of them, very little. We saw nothing basically of them in the pods. We didn't see a singular full conversation between them. So this is the first we're seeing. Uh, and they bring, they're the producers. They, they find a clip where Josh is essentially asking Jackie if it's okay that he's not a very overtly romantic dude o openly affectionate and stuff like that and she ends up saying like oh you're not soft referring to how marshall is and you can see marshall's reaction and he kind of goes interesting they then pivot over to the recorded zoom call from the day before you know they ask her if there's anything she wants to set the record straight on and she's like i've grown a lot since that i don't even recognize that jackie like you know that's a whole different person she also was very adamant about clarifying that she broke up with marshall before the coffee date that was shown and that was editing to make it look like she was a cheater she is not a cheater granted in the breakup scene with Marshall and Jackie, she does say, I just saw Josh and maybe she's referring to Chelsea's party. That would be a weird wording for that. I don't know. That was just very weird. Um, she's then asked what was the final straw for her in regards to deciding to end things with Marshall. And she says that while they were filling out their wedding certificate, he called her a quote derogatory term. He meant it probably as a joke, but I didn't find it particularly funny. They don't say explicitly what the term was, but we'll get to that in a second. Then they ask her uh, about the whole keeping the ring, something that she's like very proud of. She's like, yes, ma'am, I still got the ring. I still got it. I kept the ring because Marshall wanted it back so that he can propose to another castmate, which Marshall later denies, by the way. But my thing is like, okay, and even if he was gonna do that, why is that any of your business? And then Josh kind of explains what we see at Chelsea's party. He says that he went to the party to talk to Jackie to her face and to lay it all out on the line. He very randomly brings up like having to cut a lot of weight for a fight. I think he's a boxer or a wrestler or something or whatever. Um, he has a cauliflower ear. He lost a lot of weight relatively quickly and so the alcohol was hitting him harder at the party. And then they just move on to like pretty much pleasantries. Like, oh, are you guys thinking about getting married? Are you thinking about having babies? And they're like, no, we're taking our time. We live together now. We have a dog and a fish named Rick. And, and that's about it. It was incredibly unsatisfying. It, it felt very much so like skirting responsibility. Like we can talk all the shit we want about, about Irina, but at least she came. So then they asked Marshall, like, what is your reaction? to to those things and he's like basically i feel slighted i didn't get a chance to make a decision at the altar and now she just quit the ability to be able to talk things out here and be held accountable um it's really hard to say anything considering she cannot defend herself she's not here to defend herself they start to go into the thing that was going on on the internet um with jackie's leaked texts between her friends where essentially she was speaking about him in like a very vile, coded, homophobic language. He has sugar in his tank. 
he's sweet, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it all boils down to her like in a very mocking and disgusting way, questioning his sexuality and his masculinity and ultimately saying that she has to stick it out so that she can get to the wedding. I don't know, You, I guess in a way you can applaud her for ending it before it got that far, I don't know. But just really gross shit. They asked like what, what derogatory term are you like is she referring to basically she was calling him you know these things sweet sugar in his tank gay probably stuff like that and she was saying it to his face and he kind of said uh well you got a strong jawline you could be a man both of y'all incredibly yikes again i'm so happy y'all are not together bringing out the worst (laughs) of each other he's like that was the night before we met my family which I really wish um, that were added to some context because I could see why she would just be kind of like to herself a bit after that comment. But also, both of y'all stop insulting each other. That would help. But he does clarify that he never referred to her as any derogatory term, a slur, essentially. And I guess, congratulations, the bar is in hell. And finally, Marshall calls to end the fighting between him and Jackie. Um, I haven't, I haven't taken the time to learn about all the things she's been saying um apparently she's like taken it upon herself to like defend herself and i don't know how ugly that's particularly gotten because at this point i'm tired (laughs) i did see the texts and they were very gross um but he's like let's i guess call a truce like you you got a whole dude you you be happy focus on that uh don't worry about me let's just let's just dead it uh they shift to Kwame uh clearing up some controversy around his name uh if you guys recall in the pods he was telling people that he wanted to go by the name Alex <laughs> this is really fun. Kwame's like my first name is Alex <laughs> I go by Kwame I've always gone by Kwame which I believe is perhaps his middle name. And I considered going by Alex to alleviate some biases early into things in an effort to make the experiment as sound as possible. In the pods, I say, I decided to go with my name Kwame because I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of my name, but that according to Kwame quote, got conveniently edited out. But he was very adamant about clearing that up. He was like, I love my name. I love who I am. I'm, I love my culture. Like, nah, that shit ain't gonna fly. It is really weird to edit that out. So I would be heated as well. So I'm sorry, by the way, cause I was, I was very like, Ugh. but am I sorry? Why am I apologizing? The people that need to be apologizing are the producers, the editors and the Lachey's. I'm just a bitch on the internet that's watching the show like everybody else. I didn't edit it out. And speaking of which, let's go on to this because this is the part that starts to piss me off in addition to all of the weird, not very artful goading into drama and stuff. After he says like, I want that cleared up right now. She's like, now that that's been cleared up, drop it everybody. His name is Alex Kwame. And I'm sitting there like, what you yelling at us for bitch? As if we're unreasonable for reaching that conclusion when y'all edited the video for the sheer purpose of us reaching the wrong conclusion. And then you're like, so everybody now stop with this wrong conclusion you reach, bitch. (laughs) Then they bring up how nobody believes that uh, Chelsea and Kwame's marriage is happy because of everything we've seen on the show. Decisions that were made in editing to create the narrative that they don't like each other. (laughs) Yeah, do you wanna address that? Cause some people just don't like to see people happy. Y'all edited the show so that they don't look happy. And so when y'all come to us and say we are happy, why would we believe that they're happy when y'all made a show that made it explicitly took y'all time to make it look like they don't like each other? And they want to gaslight us when we like they don't like each other. What? How the hell are we haters when y'all have explicitly made the narrative of them not liking each other? This is the narrative that y'all created. Y'all. y'all and the donkey y'all wrote in on bitch they're like don't let the hate get y'all down don't let the hate that we galvanized and instigated and created a whole narrative for get you down because y'all know the truth <laughs> y'all relationship <laughs> y'all <laughs> so the reunion finishes up with them showing bartice and his child i don't have time he's like when is somebody's gonna get pregnant <laughs> When is someone gonna have a baby? And all of them are kind of like, we're just trying to enjoy being married. Well, when we, when we 
want to do it we'll have kids but yeah that's essentially the reunion it was a horrible idea it just makes everything so much more awkward being live they end it by showing as a side note a clip of their upcoming show which is the ultimatum queer love i ain't gonna lie to you it looks very boring i'm gonna do a lgbtq one i feel like they need to do a love is blind where everyone in it is bi Ooh, that would be messy you can fall in love with people in the pods or you can fall in love with people in your quarters or would there even be quarters at that point because at that point the path of least resistance you already know what the people look like you um with that said that's everything i want to know what were your thoughts about the pairings what were your thoughts about the reunion uh what were you thought about the technical difficulties i was having so much fun it was so funny next week we will talk about a movie I don't know which one. I'm gonna go see Bo is Afraid this Friday, which is the new Ari Aster movie. And I've heard it's very bad, which is interesting because I love Ari Aster. So to find out that it's actually bad is intriguing because I love garbage. <laughs> Ugh. But I'll let you know uh, if I end up making a video on that. I might not, we'll see. Or if there's any other movie that you think I should watch for next week's bad movie in the beat, you can put that down below. Uh, yeah. So if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. See you guys next time.